Not least, like many uh, successful and effective humorists, he knew, as Michael has just explained, he knew how to win over an audience by laughing at himself. And so let's begin with a, a few more examples of this uh, habit of self-mockery. Uh, for, for Lincoln possessed a very strong sense of self-worth. And as a result, he was able to take a joke at his own expense, joining in the jollity uh, with the utmost innocence and good nature. He made much of his pre unprepossessing appearance, uh, con conscious of his very unusual physical proportions, his height, and more particularly his unusually long limbs, his long legs and very long arms. And aware that many considered him an ugly man, uh, he faced that head on. Casting himself as the subject of the story, he related an encounter with a stranger in a railroad car who said, excuse me, sir, but I have an article in my possession which belongs to you. Taking a jackknife from his pocket, the man explained, this was placed in my hand some years ago with the injunction that I was to keep it until I found a man uglier than myself. <laughs> Allow me now to say, sir, that I think you are fairly entitled to the property. Uh, Lincoln's jesting also gave rise to a yarn that as he was splitting rails, he found himself looking down the gun barrel of a passerby who explained that, and I quote, he had promised to shoot the first man he met who was uglier than himself. Getting a good look at the man's face, Lincoln remarked, having bared his chest, if I am uglier than you, then blaze away. <laughs> L L Lincoln loved the absurd. Um, he loved tall tales. According to Noah Brooks, he thought that the chief characteristic of American humor was its grotesqueness and extravagance. He loved the story of Bill, the village drunkard. And there are a lot of drunks in Lincoln's stories. Uh, a drunkard who got uh, catastrophically uh, intoxicated on a day of heavy rain, staggered down an alley, and fell asleep in a bed of mud. Waking as it was getting dark, uh, he, sought, uh, he sought out the public pump to wash himself. On his way, he met another drunk uh, leaning over a horse post, which Bill mistook for the pump and at once took hold of the arm of this man for the handle, the use of which set the occupant of the post to throwing up. <laughs> Bill put both his hands under and gave himself a thorough washing <laughs> and made his way to the grocery. As he entered, one of his comrades, horrified by the sight, exclaimed, Why, Bill, what in the world is the matter? By God, he replied, you ought to have seen me before I was washed. <laughs> there may be no surprise that Lincoln um, celebrated for the, the craftsmanship, economy, energy, and idiomatic color of his prose, should have loved the humorous possibilities and curiosities of the English language. He discovered particular usages, he enjoyed discovering particular usages and the meanings of words. He smiled at the, as he put it, the Dutchman's expression of somebody tying his dog loose. Uh, he took delight in, in puns. Uh, he smilingly told the busy operators in the telegraph office that since it was a fast day, he was pleased to see them working so fast. Uh, he memorized the phrase of the satirist Augustine Dugan, Endymion Hurst, whose head, unlike his books, is red. In court proceedings, Lincoln knew how to use a pun to advantage an opposing lawyer who claimed that he could bring a man to prove, a li to prove, an, to prove an alibi, heard Lincoln shooting back, I have no doubt you can bring a man to prove a lie by. <laughs> <laughs> 